Hi guys and girls, and welcome back to another episode. As promised previously, today we're going to be conducting a full lawn renovation from start to finish. Today I'm working on my granddad's lawn. As you can see, it's covered in moss and it's riddled with weeds. Before starting any work, I always like to have a look at the ground to make sure there's nothing that could damage any of my equipment. I'm going to start by removing any weeds with my Fiskars Exact removal tool. I recently purchased this online after reading the reviews and I have to say I'm really impressed with how easy it makes removing weeds from your lawn. What usually would have took me hours to complete took me no longer than 20 minutes to do the whole lawn. I also find it really clever how this tool is able to pull out the roots along with the weed. After I'm happy with the amount of weeds I've removed, I'm then going to run my scarifier over the lawn. Due to the vast amounts of moss and thatch within the lawn, I'm going to lower the setting to its lowest setting on one. I also had a few comments on my last video about how you should take the grass box off and I thought it would be a clever idea to prop up the rear flap. However, after just doing one pass, I quickly got covered in moss, dirt, mud and whatever else was within the lawn. I advise you don't do this at home as you could quite easily lose your eyesight. All I'm going to do now is just work my way through the lawn, identifying any spots that are quite thick with moss or thatch. I'm not too worried if I miss parts, as I'll be going over this lawn multiple times to be able to remove all the thatch and moss from the ground. I found that every couple of meters I was having to stop and tilt the scarifier forward to allow for the thatch and moss to come through the back. Clean up was also pretty easy. I brushed any mess made back onto the grass and then just raked it all into the centre. For this I just used a light adjustable garden rake which managed to pull all the thatch in but don't worry if you can't get it all as at the end we'll be going over with a mower anyway. Once I've raked up all the thatch, I'm then just going to carry on making multiple passes with my scarifier. Again, I did this on setting one, as I wanted to rip out as much moss and thatch as possible, as I was reseeding this lawn after finishing. After the second pass, I could see I was starting to get through to soil and much of the moss and thatch had been pulled out of the grass. If you're new to scarification, first time doing this, it's going to look very unsightly and look like it's a lot of mess. However, overall, it's definitely worth it as it's going to allow your grass to grow better throughout the summer months. If you are going to conduct a deep scarify, it's well worth overseeding afterwards and covering with some topsoil. Once again, after doing a pass, all I did was rake it into sections to allow me to clean it up and move it off the ground to be able to see if I'd missed any spots. Once I was happy, I decided to get the lawnmower out and just run it over the top this will do two things. The first thing it'll do is it'll just pick up any loose thatch that you've missed with your rake. The second thing it'll do is if you have any POA annua, it's most likely sticking up now due to the scarification and this is just going to allow you to trim that back. As talked about previously, 
Some people don't like this meadow weed grass, however, I've learned to live with it, as it seems I take it out every year, and yet it comes back. Once I had finished the mow, I then identified some areas that are still were thick with moss. I decided to go over these again with my scarifier, this time though, going at a 90 degree angle. Once I was done, I just raked it all up. Once you've finished, your lawn should look something like this. I get that this can look worrying as it looks really muddy and patchy, however, this is exactly what we wanted. Next, all I'm going to do is lay down some bags of topsoil. I'm using the brand from Wix as I've heard really good stuff about it and overall I was quite impressed with the quality of the soil. All I'm then going to do is rake it out nice and level ensuring that I fill any shallow spots and divots. All I'm now going to do is lay down the lawn seed. Don't be worried about getting it too even as we will be raking this in afterwards to allow for a more even spread. For today's video, I'm going to be using Growshaw once again, as I've had such good results with it in my front garden back at home. I found applying this seed relatively easy, however ensure you do it on a wind free day, as there were certain spots in this video where I thought the seed was going to blow around the garden. I also like to break the area down into segments as to not walk over the seed and tread it around the garden where you don't want it to grow. I'd also quickly like to point out that I thought this design was really clever as it made it easy to spread the seed. Once your seed's down it should look something like this. Again by raking it through in segments it's going to allow for a nice even spread. If you have any seed left over place it into a Tupperware box and you can use this later to fill gaps. Once I was happy with the seed dispersion I then laid a fleece over the top, which I picked up relatively cheap from my local garden centre. And for a final tip, I then decided to go over the new sown lawn with some liquid seaweed. I applied four parts to five litres of water, as I found this is a good mix when testing it out in the past. And that's it really guys, I found this whole process took me about three and a half hours. But that takes into consideration stopping to take any photos and ensuring a press play on my camera as multiple times I didn't. As always, if you liked today's video, please feel free to subscribe, like or even comment. I will be posting the progress of the lawn in two weeks time so you can all see how it's progressed. Thanks for watching.